Well, it's a beautiful afternoon, Janet. Uh, just right for picking apples for the, new, the Harvest Festival that we're going to hold. Yes, it would be really nice to develop an apple called the Hunter Apple. That would be an excellent idea, yes. I would. That would be very nice to have special hunter apples and our hunter apple pies. Well, we've had some lovely uh, cherries from mm. the east wall yeah. um, and I think there's some plums that are just about ready for Ooh, picking. That would be nice, yes. I'm sure everybody would like plums. And you were suggesting we might make a bit of cider. Yes. Which I'm sure everybody would be very happy, not just the men. <laughs> well, I'll get my basket and I'll get on in. I'll come and join you and help you. Do you think we've got enough for a cider now, Madam Pauline? I think probably we have, Janet. And I think we'd better take these good people in to show them the castle. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. So here we are in the basement of Huntington Castle, which is actually classified as a peel tower. In about 1107, King David I invited William Venator from Normandy to come and settle and to provide food for the royal table. The Venators had an excellent reputation for being huntsmen. The original building was thought to have been a wooden fortress and it was replaced with a stone building. We're lucky to have an excellent example of a barrel vaulted roof. On the floor here you can see evidence of a well where fresh water was actually brought straight into the castle. And on the wall we have a waste water chute. Above our heads is a hatch which gave access to the upper floor by a wooden ladder. This would have been a very comfortable way to carry very heavy pails. We move through now, through the original front door, to the old hall. The original front door would have been a double layer of oak. It would have been secured by an enormous oak bolt that slipped in through the wall here. Welcome to the old hall, the original living area of the early hunters. In the corner we have a guard robe with a niche for your candle. I can imagine it would have been quite claustrophobic. The table and chairs that we are sitting at were brought back from Bavaria by Jane and Gould Hunter Weston. Jane was the 26th laird. Give us some examples of drinking vessels that they would have used, um, made from very crude clay. These cups are called speckled ware. In the centre of the table is a fine carving of dogs outside their kennels. In earlier times, dogs were very valued and the kennels were quite often heated. You can still see the original oak beams, which are resting on stone corbels. This is an original piece, and we can see on here the mason's mark. In earliest times, people couldn't read and write, and the only way they could be paid was by marking their pieces. Let's go upstairs to the bedroom, Madam Pauline. Right with you, Janet. In this room, Robert Hunter was born in 1799 to Eleanor and Robert Hunter. He was the last person to be born in the castle. In that same year, his parents started building Hunterston House and his father also started draining the salt marshes around Hunterston Castle. 
Everybody's clothes would have generally been kept in a large wooden chest or a kist. People had two sets of clothes made per year, one of which would have been made at Christmas time, and the oldest set of clothes would have been passed on to either servants or younger members of the family. Here we have the ensuite. It was actually the height of luxury, called the guard robe, so it was very conveniently situated next to the bed. In here, we have a little alcove where the ladies would have kept the more valuable family items. Originally, it had a wooden door. And the windows you can see here in this room are very small. That was on purpose because glass in early times was extremely expensive. So they would have used cow horn. They would have cut the cow, cow horn in two, steamed it flat and put it into frames and then put shutters on top to keep out the cold drafts. Let's go up to the garret. Right behind you, Janet. Keep to the left. Thank you. So here we are in the garret. This would have been a general purpose room. Children would have played here and women would have spun yarn. Above our heads you can see the original roof timbers. Yes, and of course, if you look very carefully, you might be able to see the marks on them. And if you notice, there are absolutely no nails in these roof timbers. Everything was done with wooden pegs. These stag's antlers were presented by His Majesty King Edward VII to Colonel Elmer Hunter. They were one of three stags shot by him when shooting with the King on the Balmoral Forest estate. The steps out onto the parapet are very steep and the opening is very narrow, which added to the security. Yes, anybody trying to get in would have had to bend nearly double. Mind your head as you come out. Here we have a machicolation, which is a curve in the wall, so that anybody defending the castle could easily lean over and shoot anybody attacking the front door without falling over. Originally, there would have been a fine view from here up the Clyde. There would have been no trees because of the salt marsh. A really good position to have the castle. It was a Scottish tradition to have graduated slates, so the slates at the top are very small and they gradually increase in size towards the base. The thatch would have been dampened down with water if the castle was under threat of attack with fire arrows. The thatch has now been replaced with Balahulish slate, um, which is very thick and durable. Running alongside the castle is the old main road, which took goods and travellers from the port just offshore, right past the castle and on to other places. Welcome to the Great Hall. This was added in the early 16th century by John Hunter, the 14th Laird. He also added the stairs at the same time to make access into the castle more convenient. This finely carved coat of arms was added in 1920s, along with our clan motto, Cursum Perficio. I will complete the course. The coat of arms was carved by the architect's son, Hugh Lorimer. The walls were originally painted with lime wash, which gave the room a lot brighter appearance and it also acted as a kind of disinfectant. The floors were covered with a layer of rush and when they became too dirty and dusty, the rushes were swept towards the outer wall and swept through this chute here. Boys and young men trained from an early age to be able to hold on to a suit of armour which weighed about 60 pounds and also carry huge heavy shields such as this one held by Janet and look after the mace. 
Along with the two-handed sword, the Scots like to use a falchion to protect themselves. And, of course, a mace. Janet is holding an exact replica of the two-handed swords that the Scots used in earlier times. Thank you, Janet. <laughs> Over here, we have a replica of a Norman helm with the nose guard, such as would have been worn by the first Laird of Huntleston. This is a copy of a helm such as would have been worn by John Hunter, the 14th Laird, who was sadly killed at the Battle of Flodden. This is a very heavy helm and it would have been really difficult to fight in a suit of armour. In the middle we have a model of a Viking ship that would have been a really common sight between 1200 and 1263. This red deer was shot by Alma Hunter Weston at Inverkord in 1902 without the aid of a stalker. This metal chest housed all the hunter's valuables, including deeds and charters which proved their ownership of land. It has a very intricate locking system and a very chunky padlock. The style of this Celtic brooch can be dated to about AD 700, at a time that is considered to have been the golden age of this type of work. In 1374, King Robert II, the grandson of Robert the Bruce, gave a charter a grant of land to the hunters. The hunters still own the original charter. This, however, is a copy of it, with the great seal of Robert II. In the corner, you will see a little silver penny, which is the traditional rent given by the hunters only when asked by the King or Queen of Scotland. We keep a spare just in case. <laughs>